What's going on guys? A little later than usual. Uh, did not get a chance to uh, record a recap last night after the game, but Western Conference Finals Game 1 uh, did not go at all like I expected. Uh, the Golden State Warriors blew out the Dallas Mavericks. They, they did a lot of things that I think are going to be the blueprints going forward. Um, I'll be really curious to see the adjustments that the Mavericks make. Because Golden Golden State, they put a lot of different looks. They just did whatever they could to to switch up the how they were pressing and how they were defending Luca, and they just they took Luca completely out of the game, and that was not something I expected. Luca, I want to say, had like seven or eight turnovers, and most of them just looked like Warriors players getting their hands in and like popping the ball out on his drive attempts, or he thought like the contact was coming. And he starts to like flail to get that call and the call never comes and the players can just get their hands on the ball. I couldn't believe it. It felt like every time Dallas put together like one or two good possessions, the Warriors just like unleashed another avalanche and they were like really doing some circus stuff that like is just like if it wasn't so fun to watch, I think we would all just be like damn, this is disrespectful. Like, Steph just throwing balls behind his head and it just somehow bouncing to Draymond Green or to Andrew Wiggins or, like, that stuff is insane to see work in the benefit of the Warriors. And, like, I think the the couple injury-plagued seasons and everything, like, I forgot that that was, you know, how fast and loose they were playing with the ball. And to see it in a playoff game where they're just, like, avalanching the Mavericks into submission before the fourth quarter even, right after the Mavericks looked as good as they did. But uh, specifically the things that um, that the Warriors did that looked so frustrating to Luka was how much they switched. They continually switched their coverages too. So like sometimes they would drop it down on his screens and let him shoot the threes. Sometimes they would send two. Sometimes I think they went zone. Sometimes they did a box and one and trapped Luca. Andrew Wiggins picked him up full court a few times. Like they did not stop giving him different looks. I think Draymond, Clay, uh, Steph, Andrew Wiggins, everyone took turns defending him. And Draymond primarily focused on Jalen Brunson and not having that second ball handler and that second um, scoring app option for Dallas really like discombobulated that team's flow. So I think hats off to Draymond Green on an incredible defensive performance. I think it was, I saw someone like when he was the primary defender, the players were four of 16 from the field. I think it was something like that. And then Wiggins, I mean, hats off to him because that's why he was a all-star starter. Um, he, you know, he's supposed to be that two-way player. He does not have the pressure of being a number one option anymore. He can just play his game and focus on defense and be that offensive boost when they need it at times but his priority needs to be being that two way, that two way wing defender and he absolutely hung with Luka a lot better than I thought he was going to um Clay Thompson even too he had that huge block on Spencer Dinwiddie um and that was good cuz I was a little worried that they were going to be trying to you know really exploit Clay not having the same type of lateral movement that he has before in years past. And that just didn't happen. Like, I don't know if it was game plan, if it was flow of the game or, or what, but I'll be curious to see what Jason Kidd draws up to, to counteract that because it's going to be how the games are won or lost. Like if they can, if the Warriors can play with that level of defensive intensity and make things that hard, not only on Luka, but on everyone else too, it's going to be a lot different series than than I had than I had expected, really. Um, and then another thing that Dallas has to really focus on, and if I'm if I'm Jason Kidd, I'm telling the team they have to go at the rim, and specifically they have to try to get as many fouls as they can on Kevon Looney as fast as they can do it, because Kevon Looney, 28 minutes in Game One, another monster night on the boards. Just a, a presence that really limits Dallas's ability to stretch the floor with those shooting bigs. Maxi Kleber got in foul trouble early. 
and then dudes like Dwight Powell and Dorian Finney-Smith weren't able to create mismatches because Kevon Looney was staying with them. Plus, Dallas, Dallas went like 6 of 41 from 3, uh, which they're probably not going to do every game, but that led to a lot of fast break opportunities for Golden State because Kevon Looney is just like a vacuum that just collects rebounds and can start the Warriors on that fast break offense. So I was blown away to see that it played out the way it did. I did not think it was going to be a blowout, but like I'm not ready to say that this is it for the series because I think there's some key things like that that are going to kind of swing how a series goes. So for instance, if game two happens and Kevon Looney gets two or three fouls in 10 minutes and can't play, then Dallas is going to have a lot easier time getting open looks to their bigs because they don't have to worry about a stretch big coming out. The big defender is going to be Draymond because he's the only other player really that they use with any size. Uh, James Wiseman would be great right here for Golden State, I'm sure they're thinking. But, you know, what are you going to do? So getting Looney in foul trouble and being able to get those open looks that those guys have been hitting throughout the playoffs, that's essential. That's got to be 1A with a bullet on the whiteboard for Dallas's offense. Uh, and then it's going to just come down to how well they can bust those Warriors coverages. When things like the zone, how can they exploit it? How can they use it to their advantage? Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie and Jalen Brunson both have to be better. I think Luka needs to not take as many bad shots. He tends to to kind of get the like, okay, it's, it's Luka time. Let's do this. And I think when he's having those off nights or when they're giving him these weird looks, he needs to defer. But if Draymond Green is locking up Jalen Brunson, it's going to be a lot harder to get that secondary playmaker going. So this is a really, this is more interesting and a more like back and forth type of battle than I thought it was going to be. Like I thought this first game was going to just be like both teams bombed threes and like whoever had the ball last won. I didn't expect a blowout like this. Uh, that's why I, I was like, you know, it's late. I got to do the recap anyways, though, because I didn't get the chance to. But I just think it's so interesting to, to see just how the Warriors went about doing this. Um, I'm really curious to see if they, you know, do a completely different set of defenses to throw at Luka and everyone. If they keep switching, you know, who, who Draymond is primarily defending. Uh, how many minutes Kevon Looney continues to play because that... That lineup, him in the lineup, is really doing a lot of in the way of spacing and pace, which are the two things the Warriors want to do the most. And you get things like Steph hitting that, that ridiculous three and hitting that dance. Like, when that dance happens, you know it's over. Like, that, there's no, like, he's not doing that just because he hit a three in the first quarter. Like, that, like that's a dude who knows he is ripping a team's heart out. And, like, it's brutal. But... I just, I can't believe it. It's so much fun to have this team back at this level. Um, I really am curious to see what Dallas does because I think this can still be a super even, really exciting series. I don't think it will just be four or five games of this. So we'll see what happens. Uh, game two is tomorrow. And then we have tonight, we have game two of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Celtics and the Heat. Al Horford cleared health and safety, so he is in. No word yet on Marcus Smart, but having Horford back is going to be huge. Um, not that he's going to be able to, you know, go toe to toe with Bam Adebayo's athleticism, but having that extra size and that just that that smart type of player who knows where to be and and what what he needs to do, just it's just another huge benefit to have on that team. You have another smart player on the floor out there knowing how to make the right plays and he gives you a little bit more versatility on offense because he can space the floor so i think it's huge i don't know quite if it's a game shifting i think miami probably takes this game too and then we go back to boston where boston can probably even the series up and then it'll become you know health and everything else so we'll see uh but really excited for that um if you have thoughts on either of the game twos please uh, let me know in the comments. Drop them there. Uh, we'll see what happens tonight. Uh, leading into tomorrow. Maybe do a recap tonight. We'll see uh, if anything crazy happens. Um, but if not, I'll see you with the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the game tonight. And peace.